Okay, physics student, this is a video about um, Faraday's electromagnetic lab simulation you can download from PHET, which is a very famous website for physics simulation in secondary. So uh, I put the link here and also in the description as well. Uh, I made a worksheet that is for this uh, simulation and I assume you have done that and here is the explanation for those questions. So the first part is about the first tab bar magnet. Uh, the first question is asking you uh, how does the compass interact with the bar magnet and if you try to move it around and of course uh, you should see this is something that you also observe in the lab as well. Uh, the red needle which is the north pole of the compass will point to the south pole of the um, magnet. So this is what you would say uh, in the answer. Very very normal. And uh, question number two is asking if we say the magnetic field line. In fact, in this simulation, uh, the background is the magnetic field line. Uh, if we say it's pointing from north to south, as we define it, and what will happen uh, when this is inside the magnet? So here, there's a button you can click right here. It says uh, see inside the magnet. So you can see uh, if this is coming from north to south outside, which is the direction is going from, uh, maybe I can draw here, which is like this. So you can see uh, how these will go is following the direction of going from white to red color. And so with it, when it is inside, you can see that uh, it is actually the opposite. It go from south to north instead inside the um, magnet. So this is what we uh, could observe as well. There is actually uh, an explanation if you find it strange because how come inside the magnet is opposite. Think about this. Uh, if you ever have a magnet like the one that we have here, if you ever try to cut it into half, right, cut this into half, what you have afterwards is you will have two new magnet of course but then what will happen to that pole imagine you cut this open here what happened to them is uh, you will have the magnet that is having like this right so the new new part of this will become north pole new part of this becomes south pole and that is very intuitive because think about a bar magnet you can imagine it's made of many infinitely small bar magnets can you imagine that, right? Many, many slices of magnet put together. And so if you try to put, cut them off together, then this will become North Pole, this will become South Pole, and that's why it was stuck together. And if you think about the magnetic field line between this imaginary uh, inner magnet, then you can see the magnetic field is also going from North to South. So as a whole, you will see the magnetic field go from south to north pole of the, the whole magnet but inside actually it still remain the same in that case it's a very interesting question uh, number two which is the second tab pickup coil here we have uh, the question asking you what happened when you try to move the coil towards sorry moving the magnet towards the coil so this is what you should find out apparently the light will switch on uh, but it's asking you inside the coil so you may you may try to pay attention to the coil you can see the blue balls will move downward and those are actually electron and so what you may say about for this is you may say the electron flow down uh, or you may say the current is induced uh, directed uh, upward in that case because you know the conventional current and the electron flow are opposite direction. The way that we explain the answer should be saying according to Lenz law, a current must be induced. Lenz law is very important. A uh, current must be induced in a way to oppose the change of magnetic field. So in this case, the B field, which is magnetic field, is pointing towards the right. And when it go closer to it, it will become stronger. Okay, become stronger. So you have to say, uh, there's a change uh, and the change is becoming stronger to the right and therefore the coil will want to induce a current that is pointing towards the left 
according to Lenz law or post change of magnetic field. And using the right hand grip rule, you'll be able to find out the current is actually going up in that case. So that is why you see the current, uh, I mean the electron going downward in that case. So this is the explanation which will be accepted by IGCSE level. Uh, question number three in this session. Uh, when you move the coil towards the magnet, instead describe what will happen. So instead of magnet going towards the coil, now coil move towards the magnet. And you know everything is just relative, then apparently it will be the same result. So let me do it again. When I move close to it, you can see the electron also move down as well. So it's the same answer as what we did earlier in 2.1. Uh, number four. It said if we move the magnet away from the coil, that basically means when you move through the coil, like so, like this. And so what will happen in the coil? So pay attention that just now when we say uh, going in, the electron go down, and then when we are leaving, you can see electron go up. So basically the direction is opposite. Uh, you can also explain it by Lenz law as well, but here it's just asking us to describe. So simply, you can say electron flow upward or current flow downward. How can we make the lamp brighter? Uh, apparently, we can move the magnet faster. So imagine it's going through it. You may want to go faster. If you go slowly, you can see the brightness is very low, very dim. But if you go quicker, you can see it will become uh, very bright. And that is something to do with the energy conservation. The kinetic energy of the magnets converted to the electrical energy. Uh, the other way you can do is you can also increase the loop of the coil, which apparently now you can see is much brighter with the, assuming we have the same uh, speed going into it. If I change it to one loop, you can see no matter how hard I try, it will be still quite dim in that case. We can also try to increase the strength of the magnet, uh, which could be say 100, then of course it will be brighter. Uh, next question is asking you if you change it to 20%, uh, what will happen to the magnet? I mean, what will happen to the lamp when you move the magnet? So say 20, actually any, any low will be fine. You should find it will become much dimmer. Uh, no matter how you do or if even if you try to do like three percent but extremely dim or even zero percent then there will be nothing apparently next part is about the electromagnet uh, and it asks you how to make the induced uh, b field strength weaker so how to make it weaker apparently uh the the color of the background which those are like arrow at the back will represent its uh, field strength so one idea is that uh, to lower the voltage which you can see when i lower the voltage to say one you can see the background is much dimmer which actually means that uh, the b field uh, strength is much weaker and also you can tell by looking at the current flow it, uh, it looks slower and of course in that case the b field is weaker also the other way you can do could also be less number of coil so if you get less then you can also see it get dimmer in the background which uh, in the actual physics way is to say uh, the magnetic field strength is weaker of course when we are trying to draw on paper a more standard way to present in the physics uh, it will not be simply dimmer or or brighter in, in terms of the, the field we will draw uh, in terms of the density so how close uh, the magnetic field are. For example, it should be going like this. So this is how it could be. If you want to make, make it more strong, represent to be stronger, then you, you simply just draw more. And if it is weaker, then of course you would not be drawing like as dense as before. For number 3.2, uh, what will happen when you reverse the direction of battery? And that is obvious. Uh, you will have the B field going in the opposite direction. So if you try to use a compass to put here, then you find after that it will become opposite. So reverse the direction of B field simply, if you reverse the direction of uh, the battery. 3.3, what will happen when you change the current to AC? So let's try it out. So interesting thing is you find out, uh, basically it's basically what you do just now, but then you do it automatically. So like this, right? you do it automatically like this. So the 
B view direction will change periodically um, depending on the frequencies. So of course, if you change the frequency higher, they will keep changing or lower frequency. Okay, it takes ages to change the direction, but it's still changing periodically at least. Let's take a look of generator. So generator here is um, the fifth tab actually. And it asks you when you open the tab, uh, you should see the lamp is going continuously as you can see here and explain why. So here is uh, quite some important steps that you may use for IGCSE exam. Uh, that includes the water will keep, first of all, in this case, the water keep turning the wheel uh, and the magnet will also be turning continuously. Uh, sometimes what will happen is not the water tap, uh, but it could be someone simply turning the crank of the generator. Um, so you should change it accordingly. Second thing is, uh, since it's turning, then there will always be a change of magnetic field strength experienced by the coil right here and according to Faraday's law you must quote the name of the law whenever there is a change of magnetic flux linkage I explained in the previous video then there will be an induced EMF okay and this is the first thing mentioned by Faraday's law and since this is a completed circuit uh, on the right hand side here then a current must be induced because there's EMF that means voltage then there must be current if the circuit is completed and flowing through the lamp and therefore the lamp is on continuously since again the whole process is continuously changing the B field in this case uh, number two suggest four ways to obtain a brighter lamp so uh, there are four ways one is to increase the water flow as you can see now it's brighter Second is uh, to change, in, uh, to increase, I should say, increase the magnetic field strength of the magnet. So now it's 75, if I change it to 100, it's brighter. If I make it weaker, then dimmer, of course. Number three is to uh, add more numbers of loops. So uh, we could change from two to three. Now it's brighter. If we decrease it, it will be dimmer. Very intuitive. Number four. Uh, give it a greater area so if we change it to greater area uh, it should look brighter but it may not be that obvious in the simulation but in theory it should be uh, brighter I think it is showing brighter when it is bigger but then it may not be that obvious you have to uh, try to see more carefully the other way that you can do, which is not allowed in the simulation, is I could actually put the coil closer. So then in that case, apparently the B view experience will also be stronger because of the distance shorter. The last one, which is the transformer, uh, is the first question is to move the battery and coil towards the right quickly and stop. So this one, move to it quickly and stop. What will happen to a lamp so similar to what we had earlier the lamp will be switched on uh, and then it will go off since we stop moving and of course you know uh, the reason behind number two is asking you to suggest two way to keep the lamp uh, to be on forever using the battery coil that means we don't want do not use uh, the AC of course later on you know when we change your AC then it will be fine but then let's not do it for this question is there any other way you can do? Uh, suggest two ways. So one way is uh, of apparently you can move the coil back and forth, like so, back and forth like this, or the other coil, because again it's relative motion, so both of them are fine. Other than that, there are some other suggestions you can have actually, uh, which may not be that easy to think, uh, and in fact these are not practical. So that means number two in the actual situation uh, you probably cannot do it the first one is to change I'm not sure if you have thought about that change the voltage of the battery so in our simulation this is what we can do but then of course in our actual laboratory we, you cannot do it I mean how can you suddenly change the voltage the EMF of the battery you cannot because it's already fixed when it is manufactured so you can't do it unless you really change it to AC. 
Second thing is you can do is uh, you can also change the number of loops, uh, which actually you may see it. Try to pay attention pay attention when I simply change the loop. All right, if I change it quick enough, I'm using my keyboard to change it. You can see the light is switched on like this. All right, and that is also because of the change of magnetic uh, flux linkage. Linkage means uh, all the B field that add up together. And so of course, if you have less coil, then the linkage is less. So that's why there's a change still, which induces the EMF. The other one is you can also change the area. I'm not sure if you can see, but just now here, there was some light, right? You can try it by yourself also. Number five, now change it to AC and you can see the light is on continuously. Uh, this process is called mutual induction and explain uh, what, why this will happen step by step. So uh, again, similar to what we did. And uh, the reason why I ask you this over and over again is because this is really popular in the IGCSE exam. Uh, and this should be something that you should be very familiar with before the exam. So what you can do is uh, you can explain because the alternating current would induce the B field with alternating direction in the coil. This is very important to specify is alternating current with the B field induced that is also alternating, or right, changing periodically. And therefore there's a constant change. This is very important. Constant change of magnetic flux linkage experienced by the lamp coil, that means the other one. Again, you have to quote the law, Faraday's law, that in that case, there will be a changing EMF and um, and also the, actually you can just say EMF if you like. I think that's all right as well. But in this case, since uh, the magnetic flux linkage is changing inconsistently and therefore the EMF induced is also inconsistent, but there's always one here. And changing current across the lamp coil. So this is what uh, happened here. The last one is, um, the one that is uh, also very interesting. I suggest six ways to increase the brightness of the lamp. So what you can do is with our setup here, uh, first of all, you can increase the current amplitude or simply increase the current if you say. So you should see it's brighter. I hope it's, is it brighter? Yeah, it should be, but maybe I can make it more obvious when, when I put closer. So now, oops. Now it's brighter, now it's dimmer. Okay, so that of course will affect um, the, the brightness. Second thing is that uh, you can see on the X axis here, this will change the frequency. So again, if your frequency is higher, then of course the change, again, if you try to go over all these explanation again, then they will have a greater change of magnetic flux linkage. Versus if it is lower, then it will be not as bright. Okay. Number three is uh, increasing the number of loops uh, on actually each side for three and four. So if you could, uh, four is maximum here, but then two is, I mean, three is uh, the other maximum. So you can see it's brighter. Or if I change it to one and one on each side, it would be not as bright in that case. So you may want to make as many coils as you want. Number five is to reduce the separation between two coils. That means you may want to put them closer simply. You can see it's much, much brighter. While if you put them far apart, then they can't really experience much. This is something to do with, uh, nowadays, you know, there are some wireless charger. This is actually exactly the same idea how you do the wireless charging but of course uh, inside there's some something more to do with safety and also the signaling but then uh, i hope you can understand uh, the reason why wireless charger will work and also in the future you may want to put them simply closer instead of just you know randomly put them uh, in a messy way so you want to put as close as possible still Number six is, is to increase the area of the loops. Um, so once again, that should help. Uh, although it may not be that obvious, but I believe uh, that should help also. All right, it, I don't think they, the simulation is made to show this, but uh, in theory, it should help. Okay, so that is all. I hope you enjoyed this simulation. If you have any idea of how 
we can explore, explore this uh, simulation more, let me know and I'll appreciate that.